I'm Claudette Sabella, and I am a chef out of San Diego, California. And today, I'm going to show you guys one of my comfort cross connection influence dishes that I eat at home regularly. I'm going to start with my adobo. An adobo is a chili marinade spiked with an acid. White distilled vinegar or apple cider vinegar. It is cooked in water. The water has come to a simmer. So I'm going to drop in my onion, four cloves of garlic, and then my cinnamon, which is the, the one controversial ingredient that my mom adds. Two bay leaves. Sushi nori gives it its flavor. It has umami in it. I'm just going to add it in here too, and I'm going to shut my heat off. So you can almost see them getting a, a little glassy versus completely opaque. So that's what you want. You just shut that off, and we are going to add our chilies. Half an ounce of chile de arbol. De-stem them because it breaks blenders. I'll let that steep for a little bit longer. I would say five minutes. It is very controversial, but being that I was raised in Tijuana in the north of Mexico, we actually are crazy influenced by Chinese cuisine, Japanese cuisine, uh, Korean. This isn't a birria in the traditional sense whatsoever, but I can get close with the ingredients that I had in my pantry. When I turned off the heat, the onions were translucent. Now they are completely see-through. And that like soft, also pliableness of the onion that means I am ready to blend. Pull the cinnamon stick out, pop everything in the blender. It smells so good. Yeah, this is gonna be spicy. Woo. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this water. Not a lot because then you end up with a super wet adobo and you want it to be like kind of viscous. You want it to have that texture of a, a sauce so it coats the meat and it doesn't just slide off. Another secret ingredient besides cinnamon that my mom uses is ginger. So I'm gonna do a little tiny bit of this puree ginger. So I'm just gonna pour it into a bowl and let it cool before I use it. So I have my adobo here. Taste it by itself. Woo! So yeah, very spicy. I'm gonna add some salt. Good two pinches, about a teaspoon of dry oregano. It's something that my aunt taught me when I was very little. Whenever you have dry oregano, you're gonna put it in a pozole or a birria. Crunch it in your fingers to release that first oil to the surface and then sprinkle it into the heat or into your sauce. And then that's like the second unlocking of the rest of the flavor. Apple cider vinegar, if it's too spicy at this point for you, a little tablespoon of sugar helps release that like capsaicin burn a little bit easier. It makes it not so hot. Be aware that it will change once it cooks. Birria is always a chivo in Jalisco, which is goat, but I didn't have goat right now. And I had some shanks in the freezer. When I pulled these out of the freezer to defrost, I put a little bit of uh, salsa matcha. You don't have to do this. Again, this is just layering flavors. I want as much flavor as I can get into this because it's not a traditional ramen in any sense of the word. It's not a traditional birria in any sense of the word, but it is birriamen in the soulfulness that this dish represents. That same chili water, I'm just gonna reserve it. A couple tablespoons of olive oil. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my thing. I'm gonna let it go on medium heat. All right, I'm gonna check this little guy. Dark caramelization right on those edges. That's what you want. It's okay if it curls. Again, this is a tough meat, so. Pour in my adobo. I'm gonna add all that chili water. Make sure it's got enough moisture. There's about, about an inch and a half of uh, liquid above my shanks. Drop the temperature to a low simmer. Tablespoon of salt and a dash more of vinegar. Just forget about this for about four hours. So once the shanks are tender, and the perfect break apart, and that broth has just become rich with those beef flavors. So I separated my meat and my broth. I am going to actually use this same broth to cook my cup of noodle. 
slowly pour that broth right into the cup. Or if you're gonna do this in a pot because you have the package ramen, <laughs> that's fine too. And this is a, a shrimp cup of noodle. I love shrimp cup of noodle. You don't have to have beef or chicken. You know, shrimp is gonna give you more of that umami, whatever word you choose. It's gonna give you depth of flavor. Okay, so, wait. You're doing a little. It's three minutes of fast. The beauty of broth has uh, like almost like a little fat cap on top. I used it as is in here. You can also skim the top. I love it. It's just more flavor. So I'm just gonna leave it in there. I'm gonna pour it into my bowl. You have your broth and it's beautifully viscous. You can add more of the leftover broth. In fact, you can add all of it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and top it off. You can see that beautiful red color. Check for seasoning just as is. Oh fuck, that's good. That really is good. And this is what happens when you cook it low and slow. It's super tender. This is one of those cuts that is beautiful when you shred it because of all that fat and kind of cartilage, beautiful juiciness that happens once it slow cooks. Go ahead and slide it on top of your ramen. I'm gonna garnish with that beautiful marrow I told you about. Ah, so good. So I'm just gonna pop it in there. This is how I like to garnish my wheat ramen. I'm gonna do a little spoonful of onion, of the minced onion, oregano, just on top, crushing that surface so it gets little bit of that oil to the surface. Squeeze a lime right over everything. Being that I'm from the north and from Tijuana, I eat a probably irrational amount of lime. Now you have birriamen. Mm. Woo! <clears throat> you get that kick in the back of the throat that beefy flavor, you have the umami from the seaweed, you have the umami from the shrimp MSG goodness from your ramen pack. This is not Japanese. Obviously this is not Mexican. It's this crazy hybrid. Eat what makes you feel good. Eat what you want to eat. Traditions and norms be damned. Because traditions are not static. Humans are not static. We keep moving forward. And I'm gonna sit here and be very happy eating my biryamen. That little gel right there. I bet you if you smear it on your face, it'll make you younger. A little marrow underneath the eyes, you know, it's a little quarantine beauty tips. Just can't get Botox. I think my grandma didn't have one wrinkle on her face. Maybe it was marrow. 